Good morning and welcome to Now Church. 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 Hello, well, good morning and welcome to Now Church. It is great that you are here today. Whether you are a regular at Now Church, whether you've been watching us during this season, or whether you are brand new uh, to Now Church this morning, we are glad that you are. Here. One of the things that we love to do as a church is worship our God. You know, we believe that he has made an incredible difference in our lives and we just love to be able to give something back to him. And so we're going to watch a little video clip now uh, and we would love for you to engage in this, to worship along, to sing if you know the words, but just to, to give some praise and some glory back to God. And maybe you don't know God this morning, but you're here watching. We pray that as this song plays, um, that you would get something from the words and that the Holy Spirit would minister to you uh, this morning. So let's watch this.
you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow tonight. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No, no, no. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't. excited to be able to bring you a word in just a minute that I believe uh, will touch some lives this morning um, so I'm excited for that but before we do that uh, we're going to take up our offering uh, every week we give you an opportunity to give towards the work of the church and we believe that's not only helpful for the church and what we do and in a moment you'll see one of the projects that we're getting involved in but it's good for us is well to be able to give something of ourselves back to God and say hey God you know what you are in control so I don't mind giving you some of my finance um, because I trust in you um, and so there's a whole load of different ways that you can give this morning uh, and they'll be coming up on the screen um, so why don't you just uh, spend some time now just giving through one of those ways um, as we find out about something that's been happening uh, this week morning to put together some boxes of hope for families in need in our community. We're putting out a kids pack in a plastic tray which can be used for messy play and all kinds of ideas that would be included in a little booklet. We've got paper, pens, scissors, crayons and all of that and outdoor games and then behind me you can see uh, some lovely ladies packing up the uh, food and that's going to be grocery supplies to help families that are struggling as well. very much to everyone who's donated either food or supplies for the children or given financially. Your gifts have really gone a long way into really blessing some families in our community at this time. Thank you. This appeal for Boxes of Hope is still ongoing. We're so thankful that we've received funding from Tesco and Morrison's so we've been able to create so many boxes and thankful for your giving but it means that we're going to be able to keep going and keep giving to more families so please keep on donating food and children's craft activities and finance to support this appeal so we can contact more schools and support more families. Thank you. Hey, well, good morning. It is great to be able to share with you this morning and be able to speak to you. Again, we still uh, aren't gathered back together uh, and we've got updates about that coming 
uh, out soon, um, but it is still great to be able to talk uh, with you because I believe you know God's got a word for us at this time, but also for the future of Now Church that I want to share with you this morning and I want to be able to speak to you about this morning. You know, we're in this season, um, but we're not always going to be in this season, but God wants to do something in us uh, and maybe God wants to change us uh, during this time. So it's great just to be able to share with you uh, today to start a new series that we're going to be looking at over the next uh, few weeks, looking at renovation, renovating uh, our lives, renovating our hearts, renovating our church. Uh, don't worry, uh, I'm not just talking about getting out paintbrushes if you're like me. Um, you, you might not be very practical, that thought might fill you with dread. It does with me when someone says, oh, renovate. Um, the reality is I know that I'm not very good at renovation. Uh, when I do a DIY job, usually I have to then call in professionals to fix the mess um, that I've made. And actually DIY for me uh, can be scary. Uh, but yeah, I see stories and I know people and some of you watching uh, right now, you're good at renovation, you do house renovations and you completely transform things and that's great. Uh, I'm not jealous of you because jealousy is a sin of course. Um, but but oh, I, I wish I had that where you could take something and transform it. Um, but today we're looking at renovating our lives, transforming our lives because we do need to change. Actually, things do need renovating. Um, our, our homes need renovating, our homes need decorating, our thing, things need changing. Uh, sometimes, you know, you can visit someone uh, and it's like you're going back in time. You see kind of the way uh, that you live. If you've ever been to uh, Mr. Straw's house in Worksop, a, a house that is stuck in time, no renovation. But but the reality is, and Sean spoke about this a few weeks ago when she, she introduced to us the men of Issachar. Actually, times change, things change, and we need to be willing, able, and ready uh, to change kind of with the times. Our mission never changes. The, the fact is that God has already given us a mission. He's already set us uh, to task to go and make disciples and to baptize people in the name of his, you know, in his name. That never changes, but the world changes, life changes, we change, our circumstance changes, and we have to be able to adapt. We have to know our times, as Sean was speaking about just a few weeks ago, uh, to be able to, to to be able to meet that mission. Well, you know, just like when we renovate our house, we don't put back into it technology, you know, from 50 years ago. If you were decorating your front room, uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't bring in, you know, you wouldn't make everything really nice and then bring in a really old, one of those fat TVs if you can uh, remember them. You wouldn't do that or you wouldn't bring in one of those hi-fi systems that maybe you had uh, when you were a kid with, you know, cassettes in on one layer, record player on the top, radio on one deck, um, CDs if you were in that era then. You know, maybe you're watching today, you don't even know what a cassette is. Maybe you don't even know what a CD is. Uh, never mind a record because times change and we have to be able to adapt. We have to be able to, to renovate. We have to change to make ourselves relevant. Um, you know, and sometimes I hear people say, and maybe you've heard people say, oh, the church, it needs to, it needs to go back. It needs to be more like the first church, the church in Jerusalem, the church we hear about and we read about in Acts. And people say, oh, we just need to get back um, to that. And, and whilst I get what these people are saying, maybe there's a, a purity to it. Maybe, you know, this is, you know, without the problems of the world weighing them down, um, I very much doubt that people would actually want to be like the first church. I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Um, firstly, when we read, we read about the first church, it says that people gave everything that they had and, and they sold their houses. They gave all of their money um, to the church to share out amongst each other. Um, you know, may maybe you do want to sell your house. Maybe you do want to give everything you've got to the church. That's great because we want to expand. We, we want to get property and works up. We want to be able to reach out to other places as well. So I'm not going to turn your money away if that what if the, you think that's what God is calling you uh, to do. But most people, when they say, oh, we, we want to be like the early 
church. We want to be like that first church in Jerusalem. Uh, but apart from that, selling our house and giving everything that we've got a uh, bit. Or, or maybe, you know, the, the early church as well, they spent all of their time together. It says daily they met together to break bread, uh, to have communion, to, to learn from each other, to help one another, to teach one another, to be there for one another. You know, I, sometimes we struggle to get to church once a week. Never mind every day. Sometimes we can't even manage to tune in online um, once a week. And so we say, we want to be like the church in Jerusalem. Uh, apart, from, apart from the giving, um, and apart from the, you know, all of our lives bit. Um, so I'm like, well, which part of the church um, of Jerusalem do you want? Uh, and the reality is the church uh, in Jerusalem, that first church uh, that we read about at the beginning of Acts, it wasn't the right model for everyone. And even in the Bible, even in Acts, just a few chapters later, we read about a change that the church went through. We learn how it adapted, how it renovated, because, because we needed to change. It needed to change. We need to change. And um, we have to go through a period of renovation. You know, I remember when I uh, first went to Bible college. I was about to go to Bible college. You know, I decided uh, that this was the right thing for, for me to, you know, to, to pursue um, you know, going, knowing God more uh, and, and kind of pursue the call of God uh, that he had on my life. And I was sharing it with people and I remember it clearly. Um, I was in my old church, the church that I went to before going to Bible college. And this lovely, lovely woman came up to me and she, I know she meant well. She was, she was lovely. And she said to me, oh, Marcus, it's great that you're going to Bible college, but don't let it change you. And I said, don't let it change me. That's the reason I'm going. Because if I, I wasn't about to spend all of that money, I wasn't about to give up three years of my life, I wasn't about to leave behind kind of what I knew if it wasn't going to change me. The fact is we should desire change. We should come to church on a Sunday morning, ready for it to change us. When we read our Bibles, we should be ready for that to change us. When we spend time in prayer, we should be ready for that to change us. When we spend time worshipping God, we should be ready for that to change us because God is interested in change. God wants us to change. God wants us to grow. God wants us to develop and that will involve change and I want change for us and I know it can be scary and I know it can be hard but change is good. Change is our friend even though it's hard it's good and the first church in Jerusalem you know what it wasn't willing or ready uh, to make that change but actually we read in the Bible we read of them this man called Stephen and the, the church had appointed some new leaders. They said, you know what, well, we need some new people to kind of lead the church and, and to, to take care of the practicalities, to take care of, you know, the feeding of one another, the distribution so that the apostles could just spend time in the word of God. And one of these people, a great person, was called Stephen. And he was, he was there doing what he was called to do. And he got taken away and he got stoned because he was passionate about the church and people viewed him as a threat. And so they, they took him and they stoned him to death. And we know that one of the people there that is stoning was this man called Saul, who, who many of you all know. Uh, and we're going to learn about him a little bit more in the series as we go through it. Um, but this man Stephen was stoned and, and after his stoning the church went into a time of persecution. Where, where the church then spread out because it wasn't safe for them to be in Jerusalem anymore. If they stayed where they were, they were going to die. And so it says, actually, the believers, the Jews, they apart from the apostles, they, they spread out. They went out into the countryside. They spread out and they left where they were and they went to new places. Now, it wasn't out of choice. It was out of necessity. And sometimes there's seasons in our lives that we would not choose to go through. But we have to go through them. This situation, coronavirus, that we are in right now, I don't think many of us would, would have chosen to go through this time. We wouldn't have chosen to be in lockdown. We wouldn't have chosen to, to have shops closed, businesses closed. We wouldn't have chosen to be furloughed. We wouldn't have chosen to have a loss of income. But I also see through this season so many people growing. So many people saying, yeah, I'm in this season. It may not be what I've chosen to do, but actually I can change through this. And even in, in our church, in now church, we've seen people 
change we've seen people commit and they've said actually i'm going to commit to investing in my marriage i'm going to invest into my prayer life i'm going to invest into reading the bible it's great to see some of our youth could do daily readings together uh, as they explore more of the bible and they're investing into that and you know what that might not have happened if it wasn't for this season and whilst you know we might not choose to go through times of persecution or hard times or times of trouble that doesn't mean that god can't do something great in our lives at those times and this is where we find kind of at the uh, as in acts after stephen's been stoned uh, the people have spread it wasn't a, a choice that they made um but it was a choice that was forced upon them but because of this we see a new church arise up so some of the some of the believers they go to to antioch um, and we see them begin to reach out. So before this time, most of the believers, they were Jewish people. The church was being led by Jewish people. It had a very strong Jewish culture. But as, they, as the believers spread out, they started to, to interact with non-Jewish people. And, and we read in the Bible, uh, uh, kind of uh, Peter having this very strong vision um, and saying, well, actually, you know what? We're not to treat Jews and Gentiles, the name given for non-Jewish people, differently. We're going to be the same. And so we see this new church then birthed out. This new church uh, begin and it looked very different to the church in Jerusalem. And it was different. It was different to the church already in existence because this church was for the Gentiles and not for the Jews. It came in a, in a new place. And this church in Antioch that we read about, actually, it was very different. You see, the Jewish people, they were, they were weighed down by their circumstances, by their mindsets, by their beliefs. And actually, they wanted, you know, they were all happy for kind of Gentiles to, to, to know God so long as they did it their way, so long as they went through circumcision, so long as they didn't have bacon sandwiches, uh, so long as they stuck to this whole list of rules. But here we see something new happen. And actually, it's this church in Antioch that I love. It's this church in Antioch that, that was kind of the real birthplace of a church that we know today. It was the church in Antioch that people were first called Christians. It was the church in Antioch where the first mission trips happened. It was the church in Antioch where they, you know, started to really distribute aid to people outside of the church. It was the church in Antioch that really started training up people. See, if the church had stayed in Jerusalem then it would have been limited to the Jews uh, and it would have been limited to the rules that they followed. But now we see the church go through this time of reinvention, this, this time of renovation. And I'm so glad it did because I don't think we would be here today if it wasn't for that time. And it was a time that they didn't want to go through. No one wanted to go through a time of persecution. No one wanted to go through a hard time. But the church was born. The church in Antioch was born and the church got renovated in that season. And it makes me think, are we brave enough to be renovated? Will this season in our life change us? Will it affect our future? Will it affect the future of other people? And I ask myself a question, are there people or are there generations that won't know God because we as Christ followers, because we as as a church, because we, as people that love Christ, weren't willing, weren't ready to renovate ourselves. We weren't willing to change. You see, all that needs to happen is for the church to not be relevant to one generation and it will die out. The church has to renovate. The church has to change. The church has to know the times that it is in. If we don't, we will be in trouble. We will die out. You know, sometimes again we say, oh, I wish church was like it was. But at which period in history do we mean? Do we mean like it was when you were a child? Most likely. But do we mean like church as it was when, you know, your grandparents were children? I remember talking to, to my grandparents about their experience of church, um, you know, and even of Pentecostal church, the type of church that, that we are. And I remember telling them that I was going to go to an Assemblies of God church, which is kind of the church that we are. And they said, oh, the Assemblies, you know, they make the men and the women sit on different sides. You know, the women still have to wear hats 
in those church. You know, if you go to AOG, Assemblies of God, you won't be able to go to the cinema. You won't be able to play cards. And they related church to something that they had experienced. Aren't you glad that the church has changed? Aren't you glad that you can play cards? Aren't you glad that you can go to the cinema? Aren't you glad that you can, females, that you can sit in your house today and not have to wear a hat to come to church? It's great that we, the church, has changed. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at how the church needs to change, how the church has to renovate itself. And we're going to look at five different stories of renovation, of change in the Bible. And we're going to ask five different questions. And you've got a choice this morning. You've got a choice. You can, you can sit, you can watch, you can type something great in the comments. You can say, thank you so much for that word. Uh, and that's, that's great. Um, or you can listen to this word. You can make some notes, you can listen to the questions that we're going to ask and you can spend time processing them in the week. You can sit down with your family uh, and say, actually, you know, what, what does this mean to us as a family? And I want you to take this seriously because I believe this will be a time of change for you if you allow it to be. I want you to write down these these questions. I want you to, to spend time thinking about it because I want you to really allow God to renovate you and for you to renovate your life, for us to go through this period of change. And I believe if we answer these questions, we can allow God to change us and then we will change people around us, change situations around us as well. But know that there's a cost. Change costs, renovation costs. I'm always shocked when I get someone out to work um, at the house or to fix the mistakes that I've made when I've been doing DIY at the bill. Because things cost money and actually change costs money. Renovation costs. There's time involved. There's money involved. There's sacrifice involved. And there's a cost. The church in Jerusalem, there, there was a cost. The church in Antioch, there was a cost. There was, they had problems. There was issues. There were theological differences between them. It took you know, people coming together to thrash those out. It was hard. But it was completely worth it. It was totally worth it. And I believe for you as an individual, if you say, you know what, I'm going to go through a season of, of changing myself, of going through a time of renovation, of going through a time of, yeah, I, I am going to change. I'm going to look different at the end of this. I'm going to be different at the end of this. I'm going to feel different at the end of this. I believe it will be worth it despite the cost. It might not always be easy, but trauma caused the church to change. And if there's a trauma maybe in your life, maybe this situation that we're in at the moment, maybe something else, maybe you can say, God, will you allow this to change my life? So today I want to ask you a question. It's a big question uh, and I don't think it's a ch question that the church in Jerusalem really ever asked itself. Maybe it was too scared to ask itself this question. Maybe they were limited by their view of God. Um, Maybe the rules and the customs that they had surrounded themselves in kind of stopped them asking that question. But I want to ask you this question and I want to ask myself this question. What could God do? What could God do? See, there's an easy answer to that question. Anything. You know, God could do anything. In Job 36, it says God's power is unlimited. In 1 Timothy 6.16, it says, Who alone possesses immortality and dwells uh, in unapproachable light. In the Psalms 147, it says, Great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. You know, God is all powerful. What could God do? Yeah, God could do anything. And God can do whatever he wants, but the reality is God has chosen to give us free will. He's, he, he never wants to force himself upon us. He's a gentleman and he's willing to wait for us to choose him and allow him to show his power. God can do whatever he wants. And so whilst there's an easy answer to that question, what could God do? God could do anything. Actually, maybe we need to look a little bit deeper and say, well, actually, are we limiting what God can do. You see, the church in Jerusalem was limiting God. It was limiting God in a few ways that I just quickly want to pull out today. I believe it was limiting God through their beliefs. See, they convinced themselves that to become a Christian, you had to get circumcised. And so it was enforcing this rule on, on all of the men. 
They're saying, actually, if you as a Gentile, if you're not circumcised to become a follower of Christ, to be like us, you've got to really make yourself like us. And you've got to go through circumcision. You must never eat pork again. You see, their mindset was still in that old way of life. Their beliefs were still limiting them and they couldn't move forward. They couldn't reach out to others. They couldn't allow others to have this God unless the other people made themselves exactly like them. And they put boundaries around what God could do. They said, you know, they were saying God had never said these people had to get circumcised. It was the, it was the church, the church in Jerusalem that was enforcing those rules. And maybe we put boundaries around what God could do. Maybe you look at your life and you think, oh, actually, God won't do that to me, or he won't do this, he won't do that. He won't heal me because I'm, I'm not worth it. He won't reveal himself to me because, you know, I've done some awful stuff in the past. He won't allow me to be in a real relationship with him uh, because I'm still doing this. Um, and so we don't even try because actually our beliefs, what we say about ourselves, actually they, they limit what God can do. And we put boundaries around that and we begin to limit God. What beliefs are there in your life that is limiting what God can do? Have you put God in a box? Have you put boundaries around him? Have you written yourself off? Have you written other people off? Have you written off your neighbours, your children, your parents, your siblings? They said they're never going to know God because of this, this and this. And have we put boundaries around God because of our beliefs? Are we saying, well, actually, God can do anything, but he won't do that. And that's, that's us limiting God. Have a look at your beliefs. What do you believe God can do? Do you believe he can do anything? Or have you, have you put lines in place? Have you put boundaries in place? Ask yourself that question. Think about it. Write it down. And I believe the church in Jerusalem, it limited God, uh, not just through their beliefs, but through their actions. You see, sometimes the words of the church in Jerusalem were great. They, they were fantastic in his first preach. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up, he, he addresses the crowd, he gives a fantastic preach and he, he kind of says, you know, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. They're great words, they're, they're words that I've said, they're words that maybe you've said, they're words that I've, I've taught, you know, and as I, I've, I've walked with people, as I've talked with people, as we've led people uh, to come to know Christ, I said, you know, this is what it says. Anyone who believes in the word of God, anyone who believes in the name of the Lord will be saved. The problem was that the words that were spoken and their actions didn't always make up, they didn't always match. And sometimes we we may say the same one thing, and it might sound great, but our actions say something else. We may um, you know, want to look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, but we've got to put those things into action. Saying, I want to lose weight is great, but actually we've got to do some exercise. Saying, I want to know God more is great, but actually we've got to, we've got to start spending more time with him. We've got to persevere in prayer, in reading the Bible, in accountability, in putting good relationships around us. Do our actions and do our words match up? You know, we may say we want to be a certain type of church, but do our actions match up with that? Because so often our actions don't match up with our words. And we've got to say, well, actually, are my actions limiting God? Am I allowing him to really do something here? Am I allowing him to do something? And so I believe that, you know, we can limit God through our beliefs. We can limit God through our actions. And then just like the church in Jerusalem, we can limit God because of our boundaries. The reality was that many people just were not willing to cross over. They didn't want people to know God because it was scary, it was uncomfortable. They weren't like them. They weren't the children of Abraham. They, you know, the Gentiles, they weren't like the Jews. They didn't have the history that the Jews had. They didn't have the education that the Jewish people had. They looked different. They acted differently. And it would make the church harder. It would take too much effort to welcome these people in. It might mean that we have to do things differently, act differently. Maybe we have to, you know, not get our preference all of the time. And I ask us, are we willing to tear down our own boundaries to see God move? You may have a certain 
uh, style of of worship you may that you really love and that's great you may you know have a certain style of, of preaching that you really enjoy there may be a type of church that you you love and that's great but what if those things that style of worship that that preaching style that you love that church uh, that you love is actually an obstacle stopping other people come to know God are we willing to to push those things down are we willing to tear down our boundaries to allow God to reach people? I remember many, many years ago at our Langdon building, uh, we were in a season, um, it was a good season, of, uh, the music was very loud, there was lights flashing, there was haze going on, and uh, John Thomas, uh, John and Sheila, I think they were fairly new to the church at the time, he, he went up to Mark, uh, Bean, who was leading the church at the time, and he said, Mark, and, uh, I think Mark was a bit panicky because he knew it had been loud that morning. He knew it had been a bit you know, louder than normal. Maybe the lights were flashing more than normal. And Mark probably got a bit nervous. He thought, oh no, here comes John. He's, he's going to complain. He's going to moan. And John just said, oh, it's great, isn't it? You see, John saw beyond his own preferences, his own style, and he saw what actually what other people needed to encounter God. And are we willing to, to say, you know what, that might be my preference. But I'm willing to, to lay aside my preferences. I'm willing, lay, uh, willing to tear down my own boundaries and my own walls to allow God to move. And so ask yourself the question this week, what could God do? What could God do? If, if my beliefs weren't limiting him, if my actions weren't limiting him, if the boundaries that I've put up weren't limiting him. See, the good news is for each and every one of us today that the church did renovate itself, that actually the church in Antioch was born and we are here today because it did. And whilst we too often limit God because of our beliefs, our actions or our boundaries, there are people and there are churches that haven't. Um, and God doesn't do that today. He has made it possible for each one of us to follow God, to follow him, to have a relationship with you. God wants and desires to have a relationship with each and every one of us this morning. His desire is for, to, to breathe his Holy Spirit upon us. As an individual sat in, in your living room, in your garden, wherever you, in your bedroom, wherever you are today. Actually, God desires to know you and he wants to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit to, to, to really enable this life that he has got for you. There is nothing stopping you making a decision to follow God today apart from yourself. And maybe you're here today and you say, yeah, I want to follow God. I want to follow God. Let me pray for you. If this is you, pray along with me. God, I thank you that you have chosen me. I thank you, God, that I can be in relationship with you. I thank you, Lord, that you are, are willing and have and made it possible for me to change. And today I want to follow you. I want to put you first in my life. I want to make your way my way. God, I'm sorry for doing things my way. I want to do things your way this morning. Lord, please don't let our beliefs, don't let our actions and don't let our boundaries limit what you can do. Help me to change. Help me to renovate myself. I pray. Amen. Hey, and I want to pray for us all right now. That we would know the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Never pray for the Holy Spirit to come uh, via camera. But here's where we are, and whilst this season may have taken us by surprise, it did not take God by surprise. And he can pour out his Holy Spirit upon you right now. And maybe, maybe you're saying, God, I want to change, but it's too scary. God, I want to change, but I'm not sure I can do it. And I want to pray that you really encounter the Holy Spirit right now, and that you'll be willing to say, God, yes, change me. Maybe you've never encountered the Holy Spirit before. Maybe today will be the first time. I just want you, wherever you are, to get ready to maybe say, God, God, I'm ready and I'm willing to receive your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that across all of the church right now, across everyone watching, 
Lord, that you would make your Holy Spirit known to us, Lord. That we would be able to receive your Holy Spirit. That we would be equipped. That we would be ready, Lord, as your Holy Spirit comes upon us. And as your Holy Spirit falls right across our church, wherever we are today. I pray that we'd be ready to receive that, Lord. Lord, that we breathe in the Holy Spirit that it would help us live the life that you have called us to live, that it would help us change, that it would help us overcome beliefs that we may have that limit you, that our words and our actions may be the same, that as your Holy Spirit comes, our boundaries would be torn down. Lord, I pray that as we continue uh, in this service, that we would know your Spirit on our lives. Holy Spirit, keep on coming into people's lives right now, I pray. Yeah, this morning, if you've said, you know what, I want to follow God, uh, we've got a gift that we would love to give you. We would love to be able to help you on this journey and we've got a resource um, for you that we'd just love to be able to send uh, your way. Um, as well maybe you know you're experiencing the Holy Spirit right now and that is fantastic keep on receiving that but maybe you've got some questions too that you want to you want to ask uh, and we'd love to be able to hear from you uh, you can drop us an email hello and now church dog dot um, uk or you can message us on facebook or if you're watching on our online platform now there's people um, if you request prayer there's people that would love to be praying with you on that platform right now so thank you so much uh, for joining us today we're going to listen to another worship song and i just encourage you to stay in this place receiving uh, the holy spirit uh, and i just encourage you again to think upon these things this week what can god do And the pressing 